Hello, my name is Drake Beery from the Hansen Research Group at Florida State University. I will briefly discuss our recently published article in the ACS Journal of Applied Energy Materials titled Cadmium Selenide Quantum Dot Sensitized Molecular Photon Upconversion Solar Cells. In this study, we investigate an integrated triplet-triplet annihilation upconversion, or TTAUC, solar cell utilizing cadmium selenide quantum dots as the triplet sensitizer. In this presentation, we will cover the solar cell assembly, device performance, and underlying photocurrent generation mechanism. Finally, we will touch on the device performance with respect to the diameter of the quantum dots. The previous work done by the Hansen Research Group introduced this integrated TTAUC solar cell using a self-assembled bilayer architecture of sensitizer acceptor molecular dye pairs on a metal oxide surface, with the TTAUC mechanism shown on the right. The platinum porphyrin sensitizer used in this system works well due to its well-behaved photophysics, but possess some limitations, including inherent energy losses when intersystem crossing from the singlet to the triplet state, production costs, absorption limited to the UV visible range, and a low extinction coefficient, all of which led to our interest in semiconductor quantum dots that had recently been shown to be effective triplet sensitizers to molecular dyes. Our photoanode multilayer films are constructed through a stepwise soaking procedure and monitored through UV vis absorption. The first step begins by taking an absorption measurement of the titania film shown in the black curve and then soaking that film into a solution containing the acceptor for 48 hours forming an acceptor monolayer. This film is then rinsed and an absorption measurement taken shown in the blue curve. Next, the film is placed into the quantum dot solution for 24 hours and the bilayer is formed. These films are then rinsed and an absorption measurement is taken, shown here in purple, showing the bilayer formation. We also form bilayers using this photophysical and electrochemically inert phenyl spacer molecule for our control films denoted as B and the bilayer absorption is shown in red. From the film absorbance, we can estimate the surface coverage for both the acceptor and the quantum dot sensitizer by using this equation where the variables include the absorbance and extinction coefficient for each component at their respective wavelengths, resulting in a 15 to 1 acceptor to quantum dot ratio. After we've assembled this photoanode, the platinum cathode is made by drop casting a platinum solution on a glass slide and then thermally annealed with this heat gun. Next, the cathode and anode are sandwiched together using a thermoplastic and the electrolyte injected through a small opening in the cathode. Finally, you get a solar cell and you're ready to test the device performance. To do this, a solar simulator is used simulating the solar spectrum and shined onto the device. Leads are hooked up to both the anode and the cathode and connected to a potentiostat that will measure the current produced by the device. To do this measurement, we use a 455 nanometer long pass filter to selectively excite the quantum dot sensitizer as shown on the left. We then performed a current versus time measurement monitoring the short circuit current produced by the device over time. A shutter is used to turn the light on at 5 seconds and off again at 25 seconds. You can see the current produced for each device when the device is exposed to the light where the blue curve shows the acceptor only device, the red curve shows contributions from the quantum dot sensitizer, and the purple curve shows the upconversion bilayer device, which resulted in a photocurrent that is 1.5 times the sum of the individual components, indicating an additional pathway towards current generation within that device. Next, we look at the photocurrent dependence on the excitation rate using a variable intensity 532 nanometer laser to selectively excite the quantum dot sensitizer to investigate the photocurrent generation mechanism in these devices. To do this, a log-log plot of the short circuit current density versus the excitation rate was made and a linear dependence was observed for the control devices, which is expected for a one photon in, one electron out process, while a quadratic to linear dependence for the upconversion bilayer was observed, which is characteristic of a triplet-triplet annihilation mechanism. The TTAUC maximum efficiency onset threshold, or ith value, 
occurs at the transition from the quadratic to linear dependence and is defined by this equation and the variables listed here. The ith value we found was 1.87 times 10 to the 15th excitations per second per centimeter squared, which is on par with some of the lowest ith values reported to date and is below the solar flux, meaning under solar irradiance, the maximum TTAUC efficiency would occur for this system. Here is a schematic diagram illustrating the various energetic processes and rates associated with them for the quantum dot sensitized TTAUC solar cells. To quantify the various energy and electron transfer rates and efficiencies, we use both steady state and time resolved spectroscopic measurements on the films comparing the quantum dot sensitized TTAUC films to control films. The energy transfer rate and efficiency from the quantum dots to the acceptor was estimated through time-resolved emission measurements, which gave a rate of 4 times 10 to the 7th per second, with an efficiency of 44%, while an 80% quantum dot emission quenching by the acceptor was observed using steady-state measurements. The rate of direct injection into TiO2 from the quantum dots was then estimated by comparing the lifetime of the quantum dot excited state in solution to in the control films on TiO2, giving an injection rate of 2 times 10 to the 7th per second. It is important to note that the rate of energy transfer to the anthracene acceptor is twice that of direct injection. Finally, we adjusted the device energetics by looking at the quantum dot size dependence on the device performance and properties. By increasing the quantum dot size, you lower the band gap energy of the quantum dot, pushing the absorbance to longer wavelengths. As the quantum dot diameter increases, we saw a decrease in quantum dot loading on the films and an increase in the measured ith value when put into a device as shown here. For more information on this portion of the study, please refer to the article published in ACS Applied Energy Materials. In conclusion, this study successfully utilized cadmium selenide quantum dots as a triple sensitizer in an integrated TTAUC solar cell with a 1.5 times enhancement in the short circuit current for the TTAUC devices compared to the sum of the individual components. A quadratic to linear photocurrent dependence on the excitation rate was observed supporting a TTAUC photocurrent generation mechanism with an ith value of 1.9 times 10 to the 15th excitations per second per centimeter squared, which is on par with some of the lowest ith values reported to date and below solar flux. Finally, less than unity energy transfer yields, slow quantum dot regeneration by the redox mediator, and competitive quenching of the quantum dot excited state led to poor device performance. More detailed discussion data and experimental design can be found in our publication. The DOI and citation is shown in the top right corner, and we thank you for your interest in this work.